Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, the stable rise of coronavirus cases is continuing in Victoria. But authorities there say it's a good sign the numbers aren't growing exponentially. While here in Tasmania, we're still clear of cases. But the interstate breakout is starting to have an impact on logistics, forcing the reintroduction of some supermarket limits. A quarantine crisis. Lax infection protocols at Melbourne hotels blamed for Victoria's dramatic spike in COVID-19 cases. Whole suburbs have been placed in lockdown as the state today records an additional 66 diagnoses, taking the total number of active cases to 442. But after a testing blitz, Victoria's Premier says it could be much worse. 66 is obviously far preferable to seeing a doubling and then a doubling again. But certainly to see these numbers relatively consistent uh, is a very pleasing. The roll-on effects creating logistical issues here in Tasmania. Workers at a chilled distribution centre in Laverton, Victoria, have tested positive for coronavirus, affecting the supply chain for coal supermarkets. Customers here now limited to two-pack purchase maximums on certain chilled and frozen products, including milk, cuts of chicken and some canned foods. Authorities monitoring the impact of the coronavirus spike on our freight movements. We need to make sure that uh, our uh, freight logistics chains are not interrupted. Uh, we'll continue to work with all airports and all exporters to make sure that they have capacity to get their goods to market and we won't let the Victorian situation be an interruption to that. Aided by an additional $240 million federal government injection to keep freight flights for local businesses running will go a long way to making exporting these goods to market so much more affordable. It means the business can uh, continue to uh, do business, sell its product and employ the people that they have in their business. For those travelling from Victoria to Tasmania via the Bass Strait, the Spirit is continuing restrictions, only allowing certain people to jump on board, including freight operators and locals returning to the state. Monitoring, however, will continue. As the matters uh, evolve and the circumstances change in Victoria, for example, uh, we have to change accordingly to ensure that we keep Tasmanians safe. Meanwhile, more union claims have emerged of interstate tradespeople granted exemptions to work in Tasmania, saying Victorian plumbers were allowed in without quarantine to work on the Newtown Coles refurbishment and it's just one of many construction sites. There's dozens of other projects around Tassie and we're talking about hundreds of workers that don't need to be here, A, because those jobs can be filled and B, because it's not in the safety interest of the community. In a statement, a coal spokesperson said the principal contractor used as many local trades as possible, making up approximately 70% on site and all contractors have committed to complying with Tasmanian coronavirus regulations. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmanian News. Police in the state's north will be ramping up foot patrols at popular night spots and even country areas as patrons return to pubs and bars. For more now, we're joined live by reporter Sean McComish. Now, Sean, what will police be on the lookout for? Well, good evening, Kim. Two words, social distancing. Police say last weekend's eased restrictions saw some pretty ordinary behaviour from patrons. This weekend they're going to have a greater presence on the streets. Last week they saw quite a few revellers who, to put it simply, had too much to drink. That coincided with pubs and clubs allowing one person per two square metres rather than the four. People can expect to see more police on a night out. Venue operators will also be watched to make sure they're abiding by COVID safe plans. In effect, what we do is uh, our compliance checks. Um, how we actually handle that, we, uh, we really focused on adopting a, a very educative approach. There is some understanding from authorities that rules like seating and no dancing are challenging for venues. Officers don't want to be seen to be the fun police, but like everyone else in Tasmania, they don't want to see a spike like we've seen in Victoria. Kim? Well, Tasmanian Independent MP has released an image of patrons at pokey machines at a Hobart pub saying they were flouting COVID-19 social distancing measures. Andrew Wilkie now urging owners of the Carlisle Hotel to up their safety they game. They might be maximising their profits, but they're putting the community at risk and they're putting the state at risk of a second wave. 
In a statement, the Australian Leisure and Hospitality Group said it meets the government's requirements under COVID-19 safety plan guidelines. Tasmanian dairy farmers have had their most successful year on record. In the past financial year, a milestone 950 million litres of milk was produced in the state, up 4.5 per cent. The industry says the growth has been caused by confidence in the market, upgraded irrigation infrastructure and more great cows on farms. For us to showcase to those outside the dairy industry the opportunities that uh, exist for the sector uh, going forward and, and in, in a, an investment sense but also a career sense as well. Higher farm gate prices have led to dairy once again being declared Tasmania's highest value commodity. The iconic Salamanca market could be reopening but it will look very different. After consultation with state authorities, the Hobart City Council has determined the attraction can go ahead in multiple sections, each with a 500 person limit and its own entry and exit points. Planning has now started for the smaller interim event to ensure it's both safe and viable for stall holders. A date hasn't yet been set for the first market to be held. Ten new emergency housing pods for women and children fleeing domestic violence have opened in Hobart. It's a much-needed boost to the state's crisis accommodation pool, but staff are worried coronavirus has prevented some women from coming forward for support. A shipping container on the outside, a safe haven on the inside. These 10 two-bedroom pods offering emergency accommodation for women and their child fleeing domestic violence. Having safety and security, somewhere warm to sleep, somewhere that's safe, um, having connection to a specialist service is really important. The $2.5 million project will open next week, but already women are being evaluated to stay. These are only temporary, fitted out in Brisbane before being shipped here and finished in just three months to meet rising demand. These uh, will be here for a maximum of three years. Uh, within that time there will be other facilities coming out of the ground um, around Hobart and around the state which will provide a permanent capacity um, to replace these. There will be on-site support for, for them by staff being here. There's a playground, there's a recreational space and there's also a room in which we do children's therapy. But staff are concerned the recent transition to working from home has made it more difficult for women to reach out for help. We're seeing a reduction in the amount of women that are actually calling, um, which, is, which is a concern. And as we start to reopen the state, and we're already starting to do that, we, we, we're very interested to see what comes from that. After three years, the pods can be moved to a new location, to wherever they're needed most. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. And if you need assistance, there is support available. Call 1800 RESPECT. After months without a physical bank, there's some relief for the town of Beaconsfield. The Bank of Heritage Isle closed its doors in the town in May, moving its operations entirely online. But Bendigo Bank has stepped in to fill the void. What we're actually doing is putting an agency inside an existing business down there, the um, Beaconsfield H Hardware business. So it'll actually complement an existing established small business by adding a bank to it. It's hoping to be up and running by spring. The Tasmanian winery is embarking on a new kind of blend. Clover Hill is mixing with a helicopter service to offer a sky-high adventure, which is fully booked from day one. The wines and the sights sparkle. And from tomorrow, Clover Hill will be taking its cellar door to the furthest corners of the state. Tomorrow is uh, fully booked. We've got 20 flights going up and uh, 50 excited uh, locals doing the, uh, doing the trip, so it's fantastic. The winery is teaming up with unique charters for the new tourism venture, shuffling fine food lovers to lunch in some of the state's most exotic locations, from Flinders Island to Cradle Mountain and Bay of Fires. I think the North East is one of those areas that uh, hasn't got an experience like this currently running. The pandemic shut down large parts of both brands, but it gave them time to workshop the idea and to realise locals are due for something new. With Tasmanians cooped up at home for the past few months, the two businesses hope this blend taps into a pent-up need for adrenaline and adventure. We found now that the inquiry levels are picking up with locals looking to do something different. That is a very rewarding uh, aspect of the job, showing people uh, such an awesome backyard. And for now, we don't have to share it. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. 
Tasmanian science lovers will be spoilt for choice this winter with two new experiences launched. QV Mag is premiering a show about the origins of the Earth and Moon, while organisers of a popular science and art festival have unveiled a new audio project, encouraging Tasmanians to explore their backyard. Tasmanian science and art at the touch of a screen. Beaker Street Festival organisers turning to technology to get people out of their houses and into nature. Hope that people will take the opportunity to get away from their screens, go outside, listen to something, learn something really interesting, learn about Tasmania's unique environments. Available in August, the Sci Art Walks audio series mixes compositions from local musicians with a talk on a specific topic. One focusing on Cradle Mountain includes a composition from Tasmanian harpist Emily Sanzaro. I'm picturing the soaring dolerite columns and you know the wind around Marion's Lookout and Karawongs and deep still lakes. Hobart's Knock Lofty Reserve also features focusing on traditional Aboriginal fire management. And our ancestors used fire to shape their world, to bring comfort and food and create the right environment for life to flourish. It's one of the areas around Hobart where we can see changes from pre-invasion times to now in the way that country looks. From getting into nature to out of this world, Launceston's planetarium set to premiere a new movie exploring the origins of the Earth and the Moon. The whole show is all about our planet and, and how uh, it, it gradually came to be the planet we know today, the, the life-bearing planet. The video featuring A Touch of Hollywood, narrated by Game of Thrones actor Richard Dormer. This journey ends here as it bears dying on Earth. His voice is, is exciting and very, very clear. So that's a really another exciting thing about the show for so many people. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Police are searching for a man after an incident in Devonport this afternoon. A woman had allegedly had her handbag stolen by a man with a gun. It follows a similar incident recently in the area. Anyone with information is urged to contact police. Good evening. Temperatures below average today, minus three the lower Mount Wellington to our top of 14 at St Helens. Hobart 10 degrees, Launceston and Devonport 12 and Burnie 11. Friendly beaches strawn in the islands all 12, Smithton and Lowhead 11, Ooze 9, Liawini a high of 2. A few showers today mostly avoiding the north, Strathgordon the top 4 with 17 millimetres as mid to low cloud moved in during the day. Now that large area of cloud also over Victoria and South Australia. High cloud drifted over northern WA and the top end saw an increase in cloud cover as well, but not much. Tomorrow a trough moves over us in the morning. A large high positions over the mainland ahead of the next cold front. A bit breezy tomorrow as winds head in from the west-southwest. 20 to 30 knots over most waters, but to 35 knots in the east. Swells to 3 metres. We have a gale warning that's been issued from St Helens Point to Tasman Island. A strong wind warning for remaining coastal waters and the central plateau lakes. Here's the weekend. 12 and a shower or two for Hobart. 10 the top for Maydina and 10 for Oatlands. Cloudy after a cold start. Partly cloudy for Launceston. 14 the top. 14 also for Devonport. A shower or two. A windy day for Liawini. Minus 3 overnight. 6 tomorrow. Top of 13 for Burnie and partly cloudy. A few showers in the west. Strawn 12. Marawar 13. And in the east tomorrow. 14 the top for St Helens. Cloudy for Swansea. 13 the high and 12 for Orford. Maybe a shower in the lower east. On Sunday, finer part from a shower or two over the west central and south. Showers over the west and far south on Monday before extending to most other areas. Maybe not the north coast though. And on Tuesday, fine and partly cloudy with southwesterly winds keeping things on the cold side. Mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow. A shower or two in Adelaide and Melbourne. An early shower clearing from Sydney. Fine and 21 in Brisbane. It's cloudy in Hobart, 7 at the moment. Getting cool in Launceston, 5 right now and 7 in Devonport. Enjoy the weekend, Kim. I hope to see you Monday. And so do I. You have a good one too. Thanks, Merv. That's your news for this Friday. Have a great weekend. On behalf of the entire team, good night.